Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video, we're going to be looking at the solutions to questions six and seven of the May-June 2022 CSEC Mathematics Paper 2. We're just going to jump straight into it and start with question six, which is a measurement question. So the diagram below shows a solid uh, made from a semicircular cylinder, cylindrical base, that's here, semicircular. Um, with a rectangular prism. Let's see, here's a rectangular prism built on top of it. The diameter of the cylindrical base and the width of the rectangular prism are four centimeters. So here is the diameter, it's four centimeters. That's what it's saying right here. And that's the same thing as the height here and the width here. Um, we have to calculate the total surface area of the solid. And the total surface area we understand is the entire area on the outside. So let's begin by looking at the shape. We have two ends here, which measure four by four. So we have four by four by two for two of them, this one and this one. And then this side here is the same as the side on the over, over that part at the back. So we have 12 times four. And there are two of them. And then we have the one at the top, which is also 12 by 4. So that gives us 4 times 4, that's 16 times 2, 32. Then 4, 12, it's the, here gives us 96 and 48. And adding up all of those, we end up with 100 and, and, um, 76 centimeters square. Now we have found the surface area of this part. We didn't find the surface area of this side, the area of this side here, because this side is actually inside the metal. So we didn't include that one at all. It's not on the outside. So here, the we have a formula. The surface area of a cylinder is given as 2 pi r square plus 2 pi r h. And what we want to find now is this curved surface area out here and the area of this piece and that piece. But because it's a semicircle, we need to divide this by two. And dividing that by two gives us pi r square plus pi r h. And we're going to be using pi, um, the question didn't say, at least not here, pi as 3.14 is what I'm going to be using it as. So we have no working out the surface area of this piece at the bottom, the semicircular part. Uh, pi times the radius is two, since this diameter is four, two square plus pi times two. Uh, let me just write that properly. Pi times two times 12, 12 is the length here. And so that gives us four pi here, plus 24 pi here, um, 24 pi, and that is equal to 28 pi, and 28 times 3.14, we multiply that out, gives us, 87.92 and now we simply need to add these two numbers together so 176 plus 87.92 and that gives us a total of 263.92 centimeters square so that would be the total surface area of the shape moving on to the next part we are asked to calculate the volume of the solid and the volume is given as the area of the cross section, area of cross section times the height or the length as the case may be. Now the, the cross section is this side right here. All of this is the cross section. And so we need to find the area of this and then multiply it by 12, and we will get the volume 
of our of our solid. So the area of this part is a square. So it's four times four. That gives us sixteen. And now we need to find the area of this uh, semicircle. So we're going to use pi r square. But it's a semicircle, so we divide by two. And so we have pi times two square divided by two, which means two pi in the end. Four divided by two is two. And that gives us 6.28 using 3.14 s pi. So we add 16 plus 6.28, and that gives us 22.28. So the volume is going to be 22.28 from that times 12. And once we multiply that out, 22.28 times 12, we end up with 267.36 centimeter cube. And that would be the volume of the of the shape of the solid. Um, part C. Part C says the solid is made from gold, and one cubic centimeter of gold has a mass of 19.3 grams. Um, the cost of one gram of gold is forty-two dollars sixty-two cents. So we should calculate the cost of the gold used to make the solid. So we have the volume. So first we need to find the, the mass by using this number, 267.36, and multiplying that by 19.3. Each centimeter cube measures 19.3, so it's a straight multiplication there. And once you multiply that by 19.3, we get a number that is roughly 5,160 grams. All right. And it's actually 5,160.048, um, rounding it off to 5,160. And then now we take that number. Um, I'm not sure if it will make a difference here. All right. Let's just, just write it down, the exact number. It might make a difference in the end. And 0 0.048. And now that we have this mass, we can take this mass and multiply it by, because we're dealing with grams, yes, it will make a difference. We're going to multiply it by $42.62 to find the cost. So 5160 Point zero four eight times forty six point six two, and that will give us a total of, in terms of dollars, two hundred and forty thousand five hundred and sixty one dollars and forty four cents. Of course, if we if we had left this here, it would be slightly smaller. So. It's not a significant difference in the number, but um, this would be the exact cost of the gold used to make the solid. Moving on to our next question. We have at an entertainment hall, and this is our problem solving question, tables uh, or pattern and sequence question, I should say. Tables and chairs are can be arranged in two different ways, as shown in the diagram below. And so we have arrangement L, which is vertical, and arrangement M, which is more horizontal. And we have it for three diagrams. The question says you should draw your the fourth draw the diagram for four tables using arrangement L. So we draw it for that one. Of course, you would simply just add on um, another block there, putting two, and these three people would sit on the outside, and two people up there. That would be the fourth one. And then we move to the table. Now here we have our table. And in the table, we have, just going to move this over a little bit. All right. In the table, we have some numbers that we need to fill in. 
my usual recommendation when working out questions like these is that we go straight to the end and find the general pattern first. And then having found the general pattern, we work our way back up um, using that information in the pattern. Of course, draw, from drawing the fourth diagram, we could fill in these. And when we get here now, we're going to have some issues if we didn't work with the pattern first. So let's work with the pattern first. Notice from between 10 to 14 and 14 to 18, we have a difference of 4. So 14 minus 10 is 4. 18 minus 14 is 4. That 4 is something that we call a common difference. Common difference of 4. And we can use that common difference 4 to multiply the diagram number. So let's say 4 times 1. And 4 times 1 here is 4. Um, the number of people we're getting though here, the number of chairs, the number of people we're getting here is 10, which means that we need to add 6 to our number here to get um, to the 10. And let's look at it now and try it and see if it works for the rest of them. So 4 times 1, 4 plus 6 gives you 10. 4 times 2, 8. 8 plus 6 gives you 14. 4 times 3, 12. 12 plus 6 gives you 8. Um, 14 and 18. So you realize that you're doing the same thing. So the pattern here would be for n, um, the nth diagram, it would be 4 times n plus 6. All right. Similar idea here. We move from 10 to 16 to 22. So we're going up by 6 here, and that's the pattern there. So we try the same thing here. 6 times 1 is 6. And to get to, 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 get to 10 here, we need to add 4. That's how we get from there to there. Let's try it now. 6 times 1 is 6 plus 4, 10. 6 plus 12. 12 plus 4 gives us 16. And you notice that the pattern is holding just the same. So here we're going to have 6n plus 4. And that would be the general principle, the general rule for this one. Now that we know that, we can fill in these easily. So here we'd have 4 times 4 plus 6. which is 16 plus 6, which gives us 22. And here we would have um, 6 times 4 plus 4. 6 4 is at 24, and 24 plus 4 gives us 28. And then we jump down here now and we realize that we need to go figure out what to write here. And this is where the formula becomes very, very interesting and very useful. So we know that 6n plus 4 gives us 130. So we can write that down. 6n plus 4 equal 130. And 6n is therefore equal to 130 minus 4, which means 6n is equal to 126. And dividing that 126 by 6 gives us the number that we want. That number is 21. So we know that the number here is 21. And since we know that this is 21, we can multiply 4 times 21 plus 6. That's 21 times 4. That's 80. 84 and 84 plus 6 gives us 90. So here we would have 90. And that would have actually completed the table in terms of what we wanted to fill in. So we fill in, fill in these, we fill in these, and we fill in the general pattern. No, part C says the person dealing with the party, Leon, needs to seat 70 people for a birthday party. Which of the arrangements, L or M, will allow him to rent the least number of tables? So he's in, wanting to reduce cost by redu um, getting tables. So let us use some calculations to justify our answer. So we need to seat 70 people. Let's start with this one, arrangement L. And so 4n plus 6, I'm going to write it as 4l. That's because we're working out for arrangement L. 4l plus 6 gives us 70. We actually have to use these because this represents the number of um, chairs that are used. And this one represents the number of chairs that are used. So 
4L plus 6 gives us 70, which means that 4L is equal to 70 minus 6. And 4L there gives us 64, right? And 64, L is therefore equal to 64 divided by 4, and that is 16. Yes? So in this case, we need 16 tables because the number that we find is it is it tables. And in the other one, 6n plus 4 gives us 70, because we still need to seat 70 people. Um, so 6n would be equal to 70 minus 4, which means 6n is equal to 66. And so n is equal to um, 66 over 6, which is equal to 11. And in this one, we're actually working out m. So L up here and N here. And notice that in this case, we get 11. So if we wanted to sit 11, if we wanted to sit um, 70 people using the least number of tables, then we would need to go with arrangement M instead of arrangement N because here we are using 11 tables versus 16 tables. And that is the justification for the answer. The answer is that we should use arrangement M. All right, that brings us to the end of our questions. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video useful, please remember to subscribe. Thank you and best wishes as you continue to study.